Good afternoon, everyone. Sugar cane freezes solid South Africa. Snowbound bitter cold continues. Paraguay exports over 3x as delivery waterways across the borders dry out. The exodus to the countryside continues. Florida now building 300 miles of new toll roads to get the city folk out to the country. Problem is these waterways are going to be built across sinkholes and these beautiful springs. The exodus begins. As Americans seek economic protection from this nationwide shutdown, Bank of America is predicting gold to $3,000 an ounce. So far in 2020, gold is the best performing asset class. And with the global economy on the brink, so many people now are looking for ways to preserve their wealth. Only one investment stands out. Gold. Patriot Gold Group has no fee for life IRAs where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. At Patriot, you work directly with an owner and avoid paying absurd broker fees. Call today or request a free investment kit. PatriotGoldGroup.com. The link's in the description box below. Gonna start you over here in Paraguay, Central South America. Now, because of incredibly low water levels, the river and barge transport that's normally used to get the Paraguayan soybeans to a loading port, too low to transit. So they're gonna revert over to a land route and Brazil there to help. Snapping up production 3.7x above last year. And a couple of good graphics here to show you the waterways that are too low for barge traffic to actually transit further south to the loading ports. So instead, they're going over the northern borders, right up into Brazil, and the waiting arms of the Chinese are there to swoop up all the extra production, not only from Brazil, but anywhere from South America. We've seen over the last three years an enormous amount of billions going into refurbished ports and dredging so larger tonnage weight carriers can get in there in Argentina. Now with the massive floods in China, the CCP is going to be out scouring the planet for even more food that they just lost in the largest floods ever recorded in China. And with all the changes in the economy and society, there's a massive exodus of people living in cities that see the true value of getting out into the countryside, growing some of your own food, but also being outside of the more constrained delivery mechanisms of just-in-time and living in cities and the problems it causes. This will be the largest reversal from the cities out to the countryside as it was from the 1930s forward into the cities. It's just going to reverse itself. Florida on track already understands what's happening. Ryan Maui picking up on this about the 300 miles of new tollways to be completed. And wherever you see these different colored lines are going to be the new routes for these toll roads. And notice that it takes far out into the less densely populated areas of Florida. They're going to do a northern and a central turnpike connector through these different counties. I've linked everything in the description box below so you can go ahead and do some of your own research. But I want you to notice the density down there in the bottom left from 6,000 people per square mile that you might see down around Miami. But when you get up into central and north to the panhandle there, it's incredibly low density in terms of an enormous amount of land, not so many people, but that's about to flip. You could get a 20-acre farm, 40-acre farm, and these are the proposed areas where these new turnpikes are going to be going in to facilitate a mass exodus from the cities into new land buyers that want immediate access. And also where I'm living, TDS is now stringing out the entire countryside for internet access. And now Florida is going to be doing internet and road into the rural countryside where it was just a pipe dream a few years ago to get internet access that far out. You would have needed to use satellite or nothing. That's great. They want to install some new infrastructure to speed up movement between point A to point B. But Florida, as you know, sinkholes, lots and lots, an enormous amount of freshwater springs too. And this is what the roads are going to cover over. So there seems to be a huge wall of pushback against this plan to go through these areas to install and construct highways through these nature areas to be seen there. Over to South Africa, and actually a lot of Africa. Look way up there in Morocco, Central Africa. 
Mauritania frozen. Look at that 16 to 20 degrees Celsius below the normal temperatures. These are degrees Celsius, so it'd be something around 30 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal. South Africa, parts of Zimbabwe, Mozambique there, incredibly cooler than normal. And this slide here with the Springbok before we get into the South African cooling, standing on frost, by the way, I want to point you to that aerial motor way in the back over there. This is a way you can pump water without using electricity as long as you have flattened land like this that will pick up the wind. If you're in a valley, this is a no-go. If you're out in a more open area that gets a lot of wind, this is a way for you to stay off-grid, still pump water, and not have to rely on anything electrical. So let's start you back in June here, 27th, about three weeks ago. Banana trees frozen, as well as tomato industry wiped out pretty much from the unusually brutal 20 to 30 degree Fahrenheit below normal winter so far with excessive winds, precipitation, snow, and ice that is so far out of the norm that again, it's a once in a hundred year storm, a once in a 200 year storm, a once in a multi-generation. And then Electroverse picked this up and started to show the different markets that were impacted. And because of this, now they just call it quality issues from extreme cold, apples, bananas, and the price gouging that followed that and the 1,600 reports of price gouging in just a single week, which is interesting in South Africa. And then continuing on through the next couple of weeks, Cape Town had the most incredible storm. I talked to Hal, who has some family down there and friends, said it was one of the strangest huge waves at 20 meters that they'd ever seen down around Cape Town. Blasting snows. And the road chaos that followed, Margo sent me this link here to follow the mountain closures from such deep and heavy snow. And then Jocko sent me a few images as well here about the same storm, really low altitude of the snow-capped mountains. In a random year, this would have been front news headlines, but since it's been happening for the third and now fourth year in a row in South Africa, and the droughts alleviating in the Western Cape as well, yeah, it's just a daily report through the news. And the most interesting of all the stories that I was looking at here, this is July 19th. So that freezing event has been almost a full month. I understand they're in winter, but this is extremely rare, this winter here. And freezes all the way up to Zimbabwe, parts of Mozambique, sugarcane frozen solid. Now this is over in Durban. This is a tropical area. Sugarcane fields, that's like Hawaii, Cuba, Sugarcane fields, 26 degrees Fahrenheit over near Hillcrest. That's in Durban. Look at the frost on the sugarcane. That's pretty intense and amazing. Now, I'm wondering what happens to the water that's inside. Because, you know, when you squeeze the cane, you get the sugarcane liquid that comes out that tends to refine into sugar. Or you can just drink the juice. That hard frost turned into rock-solid frozen water and pulp inside the sugarcane stalks. Pretty interesting. And then following over to the Facebook link, which you can also find in the description box below, apparently is the first time it's ever happened in this tropical area. And that's a bold statement because there are quite well-kept records going back into the early 1800s. So this type of temperature looks to be at least a once in a 200 year cold event, which is right on time for the grand solar minimum. It fits the timeline perfectly as well as the measures governments are taking across the planet to either lock you down so you can't move to other locations or protect themselves or stockpile food. 2020 is the crash. We're in the momentum of the crash. We're experiencing it. And as the harvest swings into autumn of the Northern Hemisphere, it's going to be an eye-opener as to what's been wiped out with the largest floods in China ever recorded. The massive damage to American agriculture through the heat and also the floods and the hail. It's going to be very apparent by 2021 what's happening with the world's food supply. And by 2022, you're going to have to grow your own. Hence, the reason so many people are moving now to the countryside and fleeing the cities. Why they need the new turnpikes. Why there is such a resurgence. Why people are buying things sight unseen. And if you don't move now, you're never going to get any land in the countryside. I go more into depth in these types of conversations on my Patreon channel forward slash adapt 2030. Links in the description box below. It's a great way to support the channel. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video and I'll see you next time.